Before we get down to the nitty gritty, I want to thank my animators Adam Mitsuk or Kuzim and Tyler Addison for the animations in this video. If you like their work, consider following them on Twitter. Links in the description and comment section below. Now, on with the show. I've noticed a random act of anatomy pop up every now and then among Mosasaur paleoart. Some folks have toyed with the idea of a dorsal fin or hump in some Mosasaurs. I think it looks really cool and sometimes natural, but does it make sense? Is there any evidence for such a structure in their skeletons? Let's get to the bottom of this unique feature and see if it's fact or fiction. Well, looks like I never did do something on the Jurassic World Mosasaur. Oh well, it'll happen eventually. Be assured, dear viewer, that I intend to discuss nearly every topic you come to me with. I only prioritize those suggested by folks on my Patreon of a certain tier. That being said, I thought of a really cool idea about Mosasaur biology that has yet to be tackled in video format. Here's a modern, up-to-date depiction of a mosasaur. Notice that it's got the bilobed or forked tail, like a shark. This structure was unknown in mosasaurs for a while, since fossils with soft tissue preserved had either not been found or only been found without the tissue on the tail. In and around 2010, a mosasaur, specifically of the genus Prognathodon, was found with preserved soft tissue. Thankfully, the tail was preserved and showed the scientific community that at least some mosasaurs did, in fact, have a forked, shark-like tail. It makes sense structurally. Lots of mosasaurs needed more power than just an eel-like paddle would provide to shoot after fast-moving prey like elasmosaurs, fish, and sharks. Paddles covering the long, bony, robust fingers and toes of the mosasaurs was assumed by basically every other skeletal structure seen throughout the skeleton. Mosasaurs are found only in aquatic sediments and would have been incapable of clambering onto dry land outside of beaching or super specific circumstances. All right, sweet. Do you notice anything missing? Some sort of structure you usually see on marine animals that like to go fast? Something that's present even on slow-moving marine mega mammals? A dorsal fin, yes! The infamous dorsal fin that gives us naked apes the heebie-jeebies. Just about all sharks have them. We know for a straight fact that ichthyosaurs had them. Porpoises, dolphins, and some whales have them. The slow-moving humpback whale has a small one I'd characterize more as a keel. Orcas probably have the biggest one I can think of. The largest animal to ever live, the blue whale, has one too, but much more like the humpback, a small, wide-based keel. Nearly all fish have some sort of dorsal fin, though they're really weird creatures that have mobile bony struts holding up their fins that allows them to fold it down for maneuverability, so we shouldn't count them in this discussion. If all these aquatic animals have these structures, would the relatively fast-moving predatory mosasaurs have them too? This is another yes-no-maybe sort of situation. Let's look at the evidence. Oh. If I had one! There isn't any? Well, that's a little too simple of an answer. Let me back up a bit. There has never been a single specimen of a mosasaur that has preserved the impressions of a dorsal fin. That doesn't mean these animals didn't have one, just that it has yet to be preserved. This strikes a heavy blow to the dorsal fin hypothesis. If plenty of ichthyosaur and shark fossils have been found with preserved soft tissues, including tail fins, pectoral and pelvic fins, and dorsal fins, and if plenty of mosasaurs have been found over the centuries without any evidence of a dorsal fin, and if some have been found with preserved soft tissues of the paddles and the tail fin, there should definitely be some hard physical evidence of a dorsal fin preserved in at least one fossil, but there isn't. Thankfully for the dorsal fin idea though, it's not completely dead in the water. When missing direct physical evidence, a scientist can use other methods to hypothesize the presence of a structure based on life history and evolution. Why do the animals that have a dorsal fin have it to begin with? 
If we can figure that out, perhaps there is some reason to think Mosasaurs, or at least some Mosasaurs, may have had something similar. Many pelagic predatory animals have a dorsal fin to combat instability and slip through the water. As I've mentioned earlier, they've convergently evolved on many different lineages of animals – fish, mammal, reptile. These animals have long, slender paddles for arms and legs, or in the case of whales, just arms. They aid the animal primarily in steering, but also in providing some lift. These animals need another thing sticking out of their bodies to stabilize themselves in the water column as they swim, especially if they're going fast. The big whales have pretty small ones as they are planktivores that feed mostly on really small organisms in giant gulps. Krill move fast at their level, but can't travel miles in a day, so the baleen whales don't need to be super fast. They still need a little stability though, so they retain a teeny tiny keel-like dorsal fin. Something found in mosasaurs that is different from whales, ichthyosaurs, and sharks are the fore and hind limbs. In almost all mosasaurs, the paddles are extremely broad and roughly the same size. Whales and ichthyosaurs have much larger fore flippers than hind flippers, and in the case of whales, no hind flippers at all. These flippers are more like rowboat paddles in being long and broad like airplane wings. The paddles of mosasaurs, on the other hand, are round and shovel-like. These are the kind of flippers which would be more likely to provide an animal with lots of stability as it swam. We know that the shark-like tail fin would have been the main source of propulsion. This leaves the limbs for supplementary propulsion, for steering, or stabilization. Their flippers were better for this than those of other marine animals, so they don't really seem to need a dorsal fin. This argument is pretty sound for most mosasaurs, but not all. Not every single taxon of mosasaur was the same. A lot had a copy-pasted body with a different noggin, but some were different. Take Plotosaurus, for example. Plotosaurus benesoni was a 9-meter, 30-foot mosasaur from what is now California. As you can see, it's got some really wonky proportions. Obviously, we've got the long snoot. This snoot is the second snootiest pooper behind Gavialimimus, which I did a video on and you should go watch it when you get a chance. But more importantly, has a really weird body. The rib cage is extremely deep and wide, and it has much larger airplane-shaped pectoral fins compared to its pelvic fins. That barrel-shaped torso is also much stiffer than other mosasaurs. Most mosasaurs have really stretchy spines, like eels, snakes, and cats. They have adapted from slinky ancestors to become big slinky sea lizards. It helps them move. Plotosaurus was different. Plotosaurus is one candidate for the possibility of some kind of fin. If it did have one, it wouldn't have been a huge orca-sized one, but rather an incipient one, more like the humpbacks. It would have to be placed somewhere on the skeleton that had the most rigidity. That would be the thorax, a bit behind the pectoral fins. The next question is, are there any osteological correlates for fins in modern animals that we could look for in extinct animals that don't have any fins preserved? Clearly, this is just another study waiting to happen, but aside from that I think we can make some observations and predictions of our own. If anyone in the audience is an undergrad, grad, or PhD student, or just an independent researcher and plans to do something on this, please put my name somewhere in the paper. A dorsal fin needs a few vertebrae that are stiffened and semi-fused together to anchor to. In most mosasaurs, the entire vertebral column is extremely flexible from side to side and up and down. Plotosaurus and another mosasaur, Plioplaticarpus, have rigid, shortened torsos. Plioplaticarpus, in particular, has the highest level of rigidity and shortest proportional torso of all the mosasaurs. Plioplaticarpus also seems to have a fused sacrum, or pelvis, which is most comparable to whales. This suggests at least some sort of stabilizing fin. This black line shows the co-ossified, hardened, or semi-fused vertebrae in a whale and Plioplaticarpus. This area in the whale corresponds to a small dorsal fin. This isn't a perfect one-to-one -one comparison though, as even animals that don't have fins have a similar fusion here, like the crocodilian Thoracosaurus. It is evidence of something, but precisely what that is remains unknown. 
Plyoplatycarpus, which at this point has five valid species, was also pretty unusual for a mosasaur, due to its well-developed endo-osseous labyrinth. For those unfamiliar with soft tissue and internal anatomy, like myself, this structure is a part of the inner ear that deals with stability. The well-developed nature of this structure in this mosasaur means it was particularly well adapted to keeping itself stable and balanced. Its pitch axis was also well developed, meaning it was really good at tipping itself up and down in a controlled manner. This sort of physiology would probably benefit from the addition of a small stabilizing organ like a dorsal fin. Is this a hard scientific report? No. Is there some weight to these suggestions? Perhaps. I think it just goes to show that not all mosasaurs were the same. They had a good span of tens of millions of years to evolve and adapt to different niches and environments, so surely some have the possibility for a dorsal fin. The recent discovery of Xenodens, the smallest mosasaurid with a set of jaws filled with cookie cutter or piranha-like teeth forming a set of scissors, has resulted in a cornucopia of pieces of art showing the critter with a small dorsal fin. In this case, I could see it as something that's possible given its small size and need for maneuverability and speed, but it's known from a few pieces of jaws, so, you know. What would I say to those paleo artists that reconstruct a dorsal fin? Eh, nothing. I think it looks really aesthetically pleasing and is a very interesting idea. I think there's a lot of arrogant, internet-dwelling people out there that put all of their emphasis on only that which is plainly observed, not that which can be inferred from those observations. If there's nothing in the fossil remains that clearly contradicts a certain structure, organ, or soft tissue thingamabob, and it can make sense with what is known of the fossil organism, I see no reason not to test out the idea in art, or more rigorously test for it with all the methods which have accrued over the years. Go ahead and put a dorsal fin on your mosasaur. It's just art. But don't be shocked when people come to you with criticisms of it being unlikely because it actually is. Look for other pieces of evidence in the remains of extinct organisms for these structures and draw away. Make sure you leave a like and comment on this video, share it around and subscribe. While you're at it, ring the notification bell too if you want to stay in the know with everything Edge. Thanks for watching. Want to help Edge out? Subscribe to the Patreon at any tier you like for a whole smorgasbord of delicious offerings. Many thanks to Thea Svensson, Steve Bradshaw, Staniforth Hopkins, Natty Cat, Dinosaur, Arda Bayer, Abby Smith, Henry Brennan, Dana Manchester, Chris Frampton, and Antron. You've all helped to make this channel possible. Thank you, thank you, thank you.